So hello and welcome to the final episode of the Upper Room series for Sidcup Baptist Church Youth. We have been um, looking at the disciples and their journey as they waited for the Holy Spirit to come and last week we looked at when the Holy Spirit fell and what that meant for their lives and one of the main things that it meant was that it was no longer time to be in the upper room, it was time to go and here's where it kind of falls apart in comparison to um, to uh, lockdown because we're still in lockdown and we can't go just yet but I think it's a good time to start thinking about and start preparing to go and I'll be honest with you as I was preparing this talk as I was thinking about it in the last week I really kept coming back to the conversation we had last week on discord and about how much you guys haven't experienced the Holy Spirit and about how in um, your lives for a lot of you the only place you've really seen God move powerfully is at Soul Survivor and I'll be honest with you I felt gutted about that I felt like I had let you down I felt like the church has let you down I felt a lot of things that weren't necessarily all true and I had to do some wrestling with God a bit this week and I kept thinking about all the people in the Bible that do incredible things do crazy things that go on crazy journeys and see God move in powerful ways and I kept coming back to the fact that they aren't special I kept coming back to the fact that they were just like me and you they were people that messed up that got it wrong that were disappointments sometimes their friends and family that let people down sometimes they started wars over women like they weren't great people all the time but the thing that defined them was their faith faith in what God says about them being true and so I came back time and time again when thinking this week to Hebrews 11 it's a really famous passage we don't know who wrote Hebrews but I quite like him whoever he is because it's almost definitely him unfortunately so Hebrews 11 and I'm just going to read uh, from verse 1 all the way to verse 16 and what I would ask is if you're doing something else while watching this if you're scrolling on Instagram or looking at Snapchat or writing something down or just being a bit distracted I'd ask just for the next few minutes whilst I read this passage you sit quietly and listen and just let the words really sink in for a moment Hebrews 11 verse 1 now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see this is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offering, and by faith Abel still speaks even though he is dead. By faith Enoch was taken from this life, so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteous that is in keeping with faith. By faith Abraham, when called to a place that would later, well, he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him for the, for the same promise. For he was looking forward to a city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who made the promise. And so from this one man, as good as dead, came, became, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. 
People who say such things know that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of a co the country they had left, they had ample opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. And I think going in the Holy Spirit is living by faith. And it might not be glamorous all the time. It might not be wild and adventurous. You might not see crazy things happen day in, day out. But if you live by faith, if you walk by faith and not by what you see around you, if you trust in what this book says about you more than what the world says about you, if you want to care more what God thinks about you than what people think about you, you can change the world. You can change so much about our world that needs changing. You can show love to the people that feel unloved. You can give people peace who are terrified. You can give people hope who are despairing. Living and walking in the power of the Holy Spirit on a daily basis doesn't mean that you kind of walk along and you're like, hey you, be healed, and whatever's going on, be healed. Them. You're not Jesus. Walking in the Holy Spirit, going in the Holy Spirit, means that you care more about what God thinks about you than what the world says about you. You care more about what you're doing than what the world's doing. You care more about what God's doing than what the world's doing. And it won't always be easy. It won't always be nice and glamorous. Some days will be really hard. Like we talked about a few weeks ago, God doesn't call us to a playground, he calls us to a battlefield. And it's hard and it's tough and it might take its toll on you. But if you live by what this book says about you, if you decide that you want the power of the Holy Spirit, if you start practicing the presence of God for five minutes every day, if you spend time with God, get to know God and lean on God more, then what you do and how you walk with him can change the world. Going in the Holy Spirit is an act of faith. It is trusting that God is walking before you, preparing the way. It is trusting that when you are guided down the harder path, you follow it knowing that it's not you that's dealing with the hardship, it's God. Giving your life to God and saying, have your way, is absolutely terrifying. But he wants you so much. He wants you wholeheartedly. He wants you to be like Enoch, who lived to please God so much that he didn't even die. He was just taken up to heaven. He wants you to be like Abraham, that even though he struggled to trust in the promise of God, he didn't give up on the promise of God. Even though everything he saw around him, all the facts that he knew, didn't add up, he trusted in God's promise over everybody else's. Go in the Holy Spirit. Go in his power and his might and trust that whatever is going on, God has got it in control. I'm going to end today before the questions come up by reading you a blessing. And once again, I would invite you to close your eyes, stop doing whatever you're doing, stop, um, stop scrolling, stop um, stop fidgeting just moments, a moment of calm now close your eyes maybe hold out your hands open on uh, your knees or on your lap just relax your body a bit close your eyes take some deep breaths and listen to these words it's an old Celtic blessing may the road rise up to meet you may the wind be always at your back may the sun shine warm upon your face the rain fall soft upon your fields, and until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen.